Hey, how's everybody doing today? Well, uh, there you have it. There's another example of what I've been talking about for years now. Uh, these incompetent public servants. Now, that's not just me calling them incompetent. I'm using that term to describe their performance. When they refuse to do the job that they were put in position to do, elected, whatever you want to call it. And they choose not to, and they hide behind other people. Now, I think it's just ironic now that uh, here's another example of a, a woman, Cindy Rogers, the uh, county recorder. It's too incompetent to do her job, simply record the instruments and documents, deeds, and so forth outlined in the Ohio Revised Code. And apparently doesn't know how to do her job. So, um, yeah, so she reached out to the prosecutor's office and then did what the prosecutor said, even though that's uh, contrary. It contradicts what the Ohio Revised Code said. But she went along with it. So here we have a female can't do her job properly, reaches out to a man to ask his advice and then goes along with it blindly without making sure that the advice is accurate. Hmm. That's interesting. It's no different than uh, Kimberly Sue Brown, uh, Kaylee Marie Hambrick, uh, Stephanie Lynn Sheets, um, uh, what's his name, David Tarbert, uh, yeah, just uh, more examples of females that hide behind males. They can't do their job. And then when they're challenged to do their job, they hide behind men that tell them what to say and what to do. So they're not even capable of doing an equal job, I guess. I mean, these people admit it themselves. I'm not making this up. Trust me, I could come up with much better, more creative stories if I was making stuff up. This is unfortunately reality, and these people are, I don't know what they are. Incompetent, that's, that's one thing I guess I do know. So yeah, yet again, We have a, a public servant turning a blind eye, allowing harm to be caused. Now, all this public servant had to do, Cindy Rogers, all she had to do was just record the instrument. But she refused. And you ever notice, I don't know, maybe you don't, I do. These people seem really friendly and seem real helpful until you actually ask them to do their job. Then they cop an attitude and they get all nasty. Just like Cindy Rogers did. She was all friendly when talking about uh, oath of office and things that didn't really apply to her job directly. You know, just in general. She's all friendly and bubbly and offering information freely and all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, when I ask her why she's not uh, willing to record the instrument that I presented, which is her job, she claimed that Mark Zangi told her not to. Well, I didn't know Mark Zangi was running the uh, county recorder's office. I mean, if, if Mark Zangi is running the county recorder's office, then what's the point of having Cindy Rogers there? Maybe she should be recalled if, if she's not necessary. If she's not there hardly any of the time, she's off running around gallivanting, doing other things that, 
you know, other than being in the office that she was supposedly elected to be in. Uh, you know, I mean, I guess her helpers there, her assistants can run the office and Mark Zangi can uh, tell them what to do and what not to do. So there's no need for Cindy Rogers. If that's how she wants to conduct business, what's the point? No, see, this is a, another clear example of problem re reaction solution. And also the uh, collusion, the conspiracy of these public servants. And whether it's malicious or not, it seems malicious, because like I said, I mean, they seem friendly until I ask them to do their job. You know, they don't start off being malicious, then it'd just be their character. You now it's when they have the change of tone. When I say, hey, why aren't you doing your job? And they get upset with me. Hmm. Maybe truth hurts. But nonetheless, they refuse to do their job. And they don't have a choice, or at least they're not supposed to have a choice. Because they're not working for their private company that can pick and choose who they want to do business with. No, they, they're public servants. They work for the public. They work for the people. And when the people ask them to do their job, they're supposed to do their job, not make excuses as to why they can't or won't or whatever. You know, excuses on uh, you know, explaining how incompetent they are because they can't figure it out themselves. I mean, that's, I think that's the one thing that has me the most curious is why couldn't Cindy Rogers just give me the answer herself? Why did she have to hide behind a man? Why did she have to hide behind the prosecutor's office? Mark Zangi, or whatever his name is. Another shyster attorney making stuff up because there's no accountability for these people. So you remember what I said? When criminals get away with their crimes, they become more empowered to do more egregious crimes or more uh, harmful crimes. You know, they step up their game, however you want to characterize it. Whatever you want to use in your sphere of knowledge that helps you uh, comprehend what I'm talking about. You know, I think I've made it pretty clear that... Uh, And with the evidence, not just from what I'm saying, not just my opinion, but most importantly with the evidence. That this is most clearly uh, organized crime. These people are working together to subvert the rights of the people. To subvert property owner rights. Uh, on so many levels federal law, state law, local law, the Constitution. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and on. And again, I mean, granted, some of this is my opinion, but a lot of it I have backed up with evidence. I mean, does that not concern any of you that these people are this out of control? Does it not concern any of you that these public servants are apparently working together in a coordinated effort at, at whatever capacity? I mean, by their own admission, when Cindy Rogers reaches out to the prosecutor's office and does what the prosecutor says, not what the law says, not what her oath of office says, that's collusion, that's conspiracy. Oh, 
by the very definition, that example is conspiracy. Especially when they use that conspiracy, that, that uh, coordinate, coordination, uh, to refuse people their rights. Or their right to do business, to conduct business. Because see, technically, the document that I wanted to be acknowledged is actually a deed. It says it on the very document itself. Now, I called it an instrument. Because technically, that's what it is. But it's also technically a deed. It's a document recording my free will and deed. that I wanted it to be acknowledged, and that's called an instrument. That's what they call it. That's what the document is called that records the deed, the action. See, the deed isn't just a piece of paper, and that's what we call the piece of paper, but the, the piece of paper is actually the instrument of the deed. But see, Cindy Rogers, like these other incompetent, public servants or uh, willfully refusing public servants. Um, they twist the, the truth. They play dumb. They uh, use word games. It's like Cindy Rogers. Like they, she was acting like she didn't know what the document is so therefore she doesn't have to record it see if, if she doesn't put a name on it I tried to explain it to her she didn't want to hear it she wanted to play dumb and act like I don't know what kind of document this is and according to the law it doesn't even say we're supposed to record this type of document really it didn't say that I read the damn law even going through all the extra uh, citations for the other uh, portions of the Ohio Revised Code that it mentioned, going through all of that, nothing in there says the recorder's office will not record this type of document, period. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that it's limited to, in fact, it says, on the contrary, there at the beginning of the, of the code, it says that the county recorder shall record all documents, or how, whatever it says specifically. I'm not reading verbatim, I'm uh, paraphrasing. I think it's just the gist of it. I think it's about what it says. And then it goes on to clarify which documents, what documents. But it doesn't, it doesn't state in there that these particular documents or this type of document isn't going to be recorded, period. That was made up by the prosecutor's office, and then Cindy Rogers, because she doesn't know what she's doing, and she can't read the law herself and understand it, she took their word for it, and then used that as an excuse to tell me that she won't do her job because a man told her not to. Well, that's interesting. She's still getting paid, isn't she? Interesting. You know, I doubt she got a pay deduction because she can't do her job. I'm sure she's getting paid the same, but she can't do her job fully. She has to have the prosecutor's office do her job for her. Interesting. Yeah, just like the incompetent dispatchers. Funny. Seems to be a common theme. A lot of common themes around here. So yeah, this is just another example, another clear-cut example of nepotism, of collusion, uh, conspiracy, coercion, 
technically coercion. And I'm wondering why nobody seems to care. I mean, everybody seems to be up in arms about, you know, what's going on in the liberal areas. These freak show cities where, who knows what the hell's going on. But anyways, this is in a conservative area. I thought conservatives were supposed to be so much better. That's just another example of the trick. It's the two separate wings of the same bird on the same flight path right into the shitter. See, all the while, conservatives, Republicans, whatever you want to call yourself, point their finger at the liberals or the Democrats or whatever they want to call themselves. And vice versa. And shit just keeps getting worse and worse. And of course, it's the good good cop, bad cop scenario. So that way they can, you know, play on people's emotions and stupidity. Get people riled up. Get people to get so upset they go out and stand on top of a cop car and throw their ass in the air and twerk because they're so upset that they can't kill their babies. I mean, this just makes so much sense to me. Crying out loud. I don't know which is worse. I mean, the chaos of a liberal city or the corruption of a conservative one. I mean, either way, the people get screwed. Because if it's not the criminal population attacking the people and causing harm. It's the public servants, so-called public servants. No matter what we the people do, no matter what I do, to increase the property value, to, uh, What's the term? Capitalize on my investment. That all, that gets stolen from me because of bigots that are in position to do so, and they get away with it. Because after all, I mean the governor or the attorney general could possibly do something about it. But I mean, look at, look at what we got. Dave Yost and no spine to wine. I mean, they openly make excuses for these people and uh, their incompetence. And I mean, hell, no spine to wine's office can't even empty their voicemail and uh, answer their phones like responsible people. But I guess when a majority of the population isn't holding these public servants accountable and they continue to do more and more crimes, perform more and more crimes, commit more and more crimes, And they get away with more and more crimes. So it, like I said, it empowers them to do more. And all the while, Ohioans are busting their ass to scrape by and survive. To 
doing everything they can to protect and save their properties and property in general. Health and happiness. Yeah, it's a real shame. It's a real shame that the people in this area allow this sort of thing to, to, to go on for these public servants to, to do this sort of thing and get away with it. Now, if you're in the area and you are doing something about it, if you're paying attention, if you're doing everything you can uh, in your power to hold these people accountable, hey, right, God bless you. But I can't imagine there's that many people doing it because of the fact that if there was, these public servants wouldn't be as empowered to commit the crimes that they're committing. I think the problem is, is that when we expect the government to tell us, not I, I mean, I'm, saying us or we in many contexts just to be polite but because I don't want to point my finger because in some instances I you know I, I'm not perfect I do I mean, I'm still finding some of these things that I'm uh, doing that I'm working through trying to teach myself not to do because uh, I'm able to do that I'm able to, to adapt I'm mature enough to be able to do that adapt and figure out how to solve the problem rather than find excuses and tell people why I can't. That's probably another reason why I have a difference of opinion with these people because they seem to love excuses. Oh, I know it's my job to record instruments, but I just can't do that because I was told I didn't have to. See how that works? Or... Yeah, it might be my job to take complaints about disturbing noise. But I don't think I have to. Just because. Not because it's you know, based on any anything. Just because. That's, you know, dispatchers. Just making shit up. So on multiple occasions here, and it's not just women. This is a caveat, but... On multiple occasions, I've discovered that uh, it just so happens to be multiple women in positions as uh, acting as public servants that either don't know how to do their job or just flat out refuse to do their job or a combination of both. And then hide behind a man. Do what the man tells them to do. Hmm. So much for equality, right? Now, some of you may be triggered by that, and frankly, I really don't care. The facts. But why this is allowed to go on is beyond me. But hey, they stole my gun from me. Got away with that. They manipulated the courts and uh, manipulated all these personnel, the uh, four person of the grand jury and uh, prosecutor's office and you know either manipulated or just they colluded they worked together they were already corrupt in the first place which that's more than likely the case I doubt they just all of a sudden became corrupt because of me <laughs> seems very unlikely now what seems more unlikely 
is that they've been doing this for a while. You know, they had to have learned it from somewhere. And at first I thought maybe it was just isolated pockets of incompetent public servants, but now I'm realizing that it's damn near across the board. Now, yeah, I know I won't say that because I tend to speak too soon and you know, I don't want to jinx it, so to speak. But yeah, I mean, it seems across the board that the public servants here think too highly of themselves. They act as if they're royalty or some kind of celebrity. I mean, hell, I mean, you heard it. The county recorder doesn't even come into the office until around like 10 o'clock or something like that. There's always excuses. There's always mail and meetings and all this stuff she has to do. It's like, for crying out loud, she... Like, that just seems like an excuse to me. Every morning... I mean, sure, there's probably mail coming in, but does it take an hour and a half, two hours? I mean, last time I checked, I didn't, I, didn't, I don't think the uh, county recorder is a stenographer, so I don't think she goes in and takes minutes of meetings. If anything, there should be a, an assistant taking the minutes and recording the uh, minutes of the meetings and then submitting that to the recorder to be recorded that would seem more likely to me but who knows maybe I guess they have a different way of doing things around here obviously I mean even when asking the, uh, the little helper there in the office you know shouldn't shouldn't the public servant be in the office that they were supposedly elected to be in Shouldn't they be in there on time and be there to serve the public when the perfect when the people need them for you know to need them to do to do their job? And of course, she fired back. No, she doesn't think so. Cause she's a woman. Women don't have to do their job. <laughs> Being facetious, by the way. That's just, that's how I took it. That's how it sounded to me with the attitude that she had. But I don't know about you. I mean, if, if this is acceptable to you all, having incompetent people filling these positions that can't do the job, I mean, I mean, look at the Bigger picture, I mean, if any of that's true on the federal level. You get a geriatric in the uh, so-called White House. Can't seem to really do anything right. Can't, <laughs> doesn't really know which, which way's up most of the time. <laughs> Those cold, black eyes just seemingly lifeless weird but uh yeah i guess it's a trickle down effect you know it's just it's funny to me and when i step back and look at it it's like okay well everybody's upset about the democrats the liberals that are destroying the government you know according to the media and what we're told, the reports coming out. Well, on here, I got Republicans, conservatives, supposedly, that are destroying the community and stealing from people. Is it really any different? I mean, other than the actual scenario. But the action itself, I mean, essentially, it's 
theft at all levels. I mean, frankly, in my opinion, every one of these public servants should be rounded up and put in jail. And then we can figure out who's doing their job and who's not through trials. Trials and tribunals. I mean, it'd be better if it was a Guantanamo Bay. Because then maybe they would see the uh, seriousness of the matter. But clearly these people aren't being serious. They're acting as if they're above the law for some reason. I haven't read anywhere or heard rumor of any laws established that actually allow these people to do whatever the hell they want to do or commit treason. In fact, it's the contrary. It says they're not allowed to do that in many different ways. Yeah, there's still people that think I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, in so many ways, so many times I take a step back and look at this whole situation I'm dealing with and have been for the last couple of years. It, it's kind of a strange mixture, and it reminds me of two different... Uh, well, I guess movies... Uh, but I mean ultimately it's like the Twilight Zone which is a TV show well I think there was a couple of movies but anyways as I digress no, it's, it's like they live and well I guess Twilight Zone is a good example too it's like they live with a little bit of Twilight Zone mixed in Like, sometimes I feel like Rowdy Rowdy Piper, and they live, and, you know, where he's trying to tell his buddy about the sunglasses, and he's like, just put them on. Like, just put them on and look through them. That's all you gotta do is just put them on and look through them. It's that simple. I'm not asking you to go have a surgery or change your entire life. Just put the damn sunglasses on and look through them. You'll see what I'm talking about. He's got... You got people that just refuse. Not all. There's more and more recently have been you know, open to pay attention and uh, see what's actually going on, rather than just judging it like a book, like a book cover or the cover of a book, however the saying goes. Passing judgment on me and oh, he's just a crazy person. I mean, really, who, who's crazy? Just because I can articulate what I'm talking about, use examples and show evidence, and you can't understand it, doesn't mean that I'm crazy. It means that you're an idiot. <laughs> if you can't understand what I'm saying. And if the shoe fits, by all means, you know. I mean, what I'm saying isn't that far-fetched. It's not that far out there. I'm not using, at least I don't think I'm using words that are overly complicated or too complicated for people to understand. But I guess maybe there are some people listening to this that don't have a very high level of education. And if that's the case, then, hey, that's, that's it is what it is. But it's up to you to... Learn about what I'm talking about if you don't understand. Because just telling me I'm crazy or saying 
dumb shit like that. That's not an argument. That doesn't... <coughs> Excuse me. That doesn't prove your position other than proving the fact that you're an idiot if you say stuff like that. I have yet to have anybody actually look into what I'm talking about and have a grown-up conversation with me about it. I've had a few decent comments. But usually it's just general general questions about how things are going and stuff like that. But I rarely get anybody asking me to, you know, explain a little bit further what I'm talking about, break it down a little bit more. Because they don't understand. No, it's they don't understand, and they just they just attack because they're scared, because they're fearful, because they don't know. They're they're afraid of the unknown. And when somebody like me comes along and provides information that could potentially shatter that little bubble of uh, I guess psychosis that they live in. They get a little freaked out. And instead of, saying, instead of saying, what? What was that? I'm sorry. What did you just say? No, it's, they lash out. They get upset. They get, you know. They'll act like little children. They're in a temper tantrum because they couldn't get their way. They, they, didn't, they didn't get what they wanted. You know, frankly, I don't understand why these people just don't change the channel. <laughs> if you don't like it, just change the channel. Why do you gotta attack, 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 attack? But, I mean, I guess that comes down to the level of maturity. People just aren't that mature these days. So, yeah, another example. Yet another example of another incompetent public servant that I have evidence of their incompetence, willful incompetence, mind you. They've chosen to act this way. I didn't force them. I didn't tell them what to do or tell them to, to do this, I guess. I mean, in the, in the context I was telling them what to do, I was just telling them, what to, you know, telling them to do their job. I wasn't trying to tell them to do something other than that, but they've refused to do their job and told me that they don't do, the, do that job that the law requires. Just like the other public servants from Zanesville. So see, it's, it's a county issue. It's county-wide. It's not just... Zanesville, it's Muskingum County. I mean, it doesn't help that the county buildings are located right in downtown Zanesville. I mean, hell, that setup is almost like inbreeding itself. <laughs> Yeah, just unreal, unreal that this many people can be this deceived. Brainwashed. I mean, but then again, I, I, gotta, I have to consider things like Stockholm Syndrome. But for some of these people, their entire lives... They've known nothing else. So how could they possibly have a difference of opinion when they've never been shown a different way? I think that's part of the trap. I think that's part of the trap that helps to create this cesspool of criminal activity. 
Because you got the so-called criminals that they bring in constantly every day, which is mostly drug offenders and disorderly conduct. Because they don't like the way people act. Granted, some of them might be justified. There are some shitty people out there that cause a scene and, you know, are, are deserving of that. But in my experience, while I was there, seemed to me like, uh, yeah, it's not the so-called uh, criminals that are out of control, it's the public servants. You know, it was just one kid. He, he must have been a new cop for the uh, Zanesville Police Department, but well, I was in uh, one of the holding cells. He had brought this guy in, and uh, he had him in front of the uh, the bay or whatever the the counter there where they uh, pat you know, people down and process them, of course, like uh, like cattle. But uh, so, anyways, so this young kid officer was just being an asshole with this guy. The guy was pretty much cooperating, and he was talking about how he's having chest pains and stuff like that. And so then this, this kid officer is getting pissed off at the guy because the guy is saying, he's like, hey, I'm having chest pains. I'm not feeling well. And he's, he's, he's kind of doubling over, holding his chest, and he's like, I'm, I don't feel well. And this kid officer is getting pissed off, and he starts screaming at the guy yelling at him, like telling him to, to do what he says or he'll charge him with more crimes. And, uh, and the guy's like, you can't do that. And, like, and, and the, the kid cop is like, I can do whatever I want. I can charge you with whatever I want to charge you with, whatever I want to charge it, charge you with it. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, what the hell's wrong with this kid? I mean, he did have a big scar on the back of his head, so he probably got, you know, cracked on the, the head pretty good at some point in his life, so maybe that's why he's acting the way he is. Um, but I, you know, standing there, I couldn't just stand by and watch this and not say anything, so I pounded on the door and said, hey, you can't do that. You can't threaten people like that. And of course, he didn't like it, but at least he, you know, knock it off, and he started being a little bit more respectful towards the guy, and they ended up taking him to the hospital and get him checked out. But that's the type of people that these these public servants are. I mean, even these young kids, brand new cops, you know, they, they act like their shit doesn't stink, and they act like they have full and complete authority to do whatever the hell they want to do, and abuse people, and hurt people. Not only was that what I witnessed, but I experienced that firsthand. So this is definitely a, or an, it's an organized, uh, in my opinion, it's an organized crime situation. Because clearly, between the city and the county, they're working together. You know, specifically in my experience, uh, excuse me, in my experience, um, but I can't be the only one. And it's hard to say for how long they've been doing this and how many other people have had to suffer because of these people and have had their property stolen too. All this talk about immunity, saying that certain public servants are immune from ramifications of their actions is ludicrous. It's ridiculous. It's unconstitutional. It's a step in the wrong direction. 
And, of course, it's the politicians, these public servants that are creating the immunity for themselves. And then now we have not only do police officers think that they, their shit doesn't stink and that they can't do anything wrong, but now apparently even the county recorder's office, the elected official there, quote unquote, apparently thinks that she can do whatever she wants to do, uh, especially not doing her job, and thinks that, thinks that that's okay. Prosecutor's office, apparently, apparently they run everything. Apparently they tell everybody at every level of uh, the uh, public servants what to do and how to do it. And because these public servants are so stupid and incompetent, they don't question it. They don't actually verify that what they're being told is true and accurate. Well, I hate to tell them, but these shyster attorneys, these shyster prosecutors, they would devour them as quickly as they would devour me if they had the opportunity. Or, you know, had the opportunity to throw them under the bus. So they, they think that they're safe just because they're a public servant also, but you know, these people, when, when given this much unchecked power, unbridled power, it, just, it starts to get like a, uh, a feeding frenzy to a degree. And I'm not going to compare them to sharks. That's ridiculous because they're just, they're not that cunning and smart. They're just criminals without uh, accountability. And they hide behind their titles and say, oh, well, I'm a prosecutor. I'm a district attorney. I'm an esquire. Like, yeah, well, frankly, I think you're a piece of shit. Not just because, but because of the way that they act, the things that they do. Yet another example. Just it, it. How many more examples do you all need? How many more corrupt politicians and public servants? Do I need to expose for you people to wake the hell up and pay attention? Stop acting like I'm the problem because I'm pointing the shit out. You know, I shouldn't have to say that this shit shouldn't be happening. I shouldn't have to be pointing this stuff out because it shouldn't be going on in the first place. But the only reason it does transpire, the only reason it does happen is because the majority of the population is too stupid or asleep or cowardly to do anything about it. Because after all, you have to become aware of the problem before you can do anything about the problem, right? Well, too many people want to keep their heads in the sand like a fucking ostrich and wonder why shit's going downhill and getting destroyed around us. You know, it's here in our backyards now. It's right here at our doorsteps. May have been for longer than what I realized, but hey, when I finally became aware, that's when I was able to do something about it or begin to do something about it. So here I am trying to make you all aware. And all I get is bitching and moaning and 
people trying to control the uh, the narrative, trying to control the conversation through comments. Trying to make it sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. And again, that's only only to the stupid people that can't understand what I'm talking about. Those that have a God-given brain that they use and can think for themselves realize what I'm saying to be true. But unfortunately, I think we're at the point after the last two years, looking around at the sea of face diapers, I think a majority of the people are just ready to give up. Just cowards. I don't know if they were born that way or maybe they just can't take it anymore. They don't like being, you know, dealing with the uh, circumstances of life. They want to be coddled and bottle fed and, you know, they need their diapers changed. They need mommy and daddy to take care of everything for them because they, they never grew up. They never learned how to you know, be responsible for themselves. What a shame. I think the biggest shame of it all is that there's young men and women that sacrifice their lives to protect this, to allow this to keep going on. But what I was saying, I can't remember the saying, something like, we who serve willfully for the ungrateful or something, something like that. No, I mean, granted, not every military action is uh, proper. I'll give you that. Then, with that being said, too, even after military service, there's veterans that don't seem to want to pay attention. That, in my opinion, are spitting on the graves of the brothers and sisters that paid that ultimate sacrifice, made that ultimate sacrifice, however you want to describe it. And that's what baffles me even more. Like, for example, Keith A. Edwards, I can't remember what his middle name is, what the A stands for, I think it's Alan, something like that. Uh, yeah, Keith A. Edwards, an attorney. Go figure. Yeah, according to him, he claims to be a former Marine. I mean, I don't see it, frankly, but hey, whatever. This is what he told me. So, for what it's worth, I wasn't able to verify it. I don't really care to. But just for the conversation and came to mind, this shyster attorney claims to be uh, a veteran. Claims to have served in the Marine Corps. And yet here he is. Uh, in the courts. Working with the prosecutor's office and the court. To subvert people's rights and to take people's rights away. And to extort them for money. to collude and conspire with these other attorneys and public servants to destroy people's lives. Because he makes money doing that. 
No, I mean, I guess not everybody that joins the military has the mindset of, you know, protecting or serving or, uh, you know, building constructively in the community or in the area or however you want to look at it. You know, it's hard to say if it's from his upbringing or from his training that he acts the way that he does. I would probably say more so the upbringing, but who knows? It's hard to say. Because he's not the only one. In fact, in my experience, and maybe you all can help me comprehend why it is, but in my experience, it's an overwhelming majority of former Marines that are ignoring the Constitution, that are subverting people's rights, that are performing actions contrary to what they should be doing. Uh, even police officers, there's a lot of police officers that are former Marines. So I guess when I put that into context, it's no wonder why they act the way that they do. But they're not supposed to. But they do, and they get away with it. So how many more examples do you need before you realize that right here in your own backyard, right here in your own community, basically right here at your doorstep, is tyranny and treason. And no one seems to really give a shit.